Hey, in today's episode, we're going to talk to you about the wild animals that are found in Arizona and specifically how to keep them off your homestead property. Hey, if you're new to this channel, we are in the process of moving off grid, but we're in the planning stages. I think it'd be really foolish if we just up and left and then tried to figure it out when we got there. So right now we're in the planning stage. I still have a job here in Colorado and we hope you enjoy this video. If you haven't subscribed, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give us a like, okay? Helps with the algorithm. All right, so we're gonna first, we're gonna go down a list of all the animals that live in Arizona. We're not specific in a certain area, so some of these animals might not be prevalent in your area or your neck of the woods, but these are just generalized animals you will find in Arizona. And we'll start with the shrew. The shrew is the first animal we're talking about. They're very small. They typically will get in your gardens. They like to move around, they like to burrow, but they don't eat your plants. So the only damage that you're gonna get from these shrews are through root damage when they're burrowing under. But other than that, they're actually a beneficial animal that you might want to consider keeping in your garden because they eat all the bad insects. Yeah, so how big are shrews? I, th I think they're like the size of your thumb. Oh, they're pretty tiny then. So you could mistake them for a mouse if you can't see very well. So yeah, so they're tiny and they probably won't cause you any trouble. You might not even notice them. But if they do become a nuisance on your property, you can easily trap and relocate them if you need to. All right, so the next one we're gonna talk about is bats. Bats in Arizona, there's over 25 varieties of bats that circumnavigate above your head in the dark in Arizona. And they typically like to hide in small crevices and cracks during the daytime. And believe it or not, they've gotten a bad rap. Um, people think that they carry disease. They might carry disease, but the actual transmission of back to human diseases is very, very rare. And they're actually beneficial because they eat like one tenth of the world's weight in insects. And you can imagine if those were on your plants eating all that uh, vegetation in your garden, you probably wouldn't have any. Uh, but thanks to bats, they eat most of those insects. And Carrie's gonna talk about if you want to attract bats into your area or actually give them housing, what you might do. Yeah, so one thing I wanna mention really quick about the disease with bats, the main disease that they're known to carry is rabies. And it does happen, but like Doug said, it is rare. If you do come in contact with a bat, even if you think you just got a little bat scratch or something, it happens sometimes they get into people's houses and they try to trap them. So if that ever happens, you need to contact a medical professional and probably get the rabies series, which is not fun to go through, but rabies is deadly and you definitely don't want to get it. But like Doug said, it doesn't happen all that often. So bats are great pollinators. If you think of them like you would a bird or um, a bee, they kind of work that way as well. And they do a great job on pollinating. So a lot of people that have farms and homesteads and things like that like to actually build bat boxes, which are actually pretty similar to like a birdhouse. There's lots of instructions on how to build them online. Um, we probably will do that when we're once we get on the property because we want to take advantage of as many pollinators as we can on the property. And and they're not. You can you've heard of bat guano, right? Bat guano is added to those very expensive soil amendments that you purchase at Lowell's or Home Depot. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> actually having bats might be beneficial if they're staying in one area and putting it on the ground where you can just pick it up and throw it in your garden. There's some free nutrients. Yeah, and if they're becoming a nuisance, you can uh, do the same thing that you would do with like a nuisance bird and use something like bird netting to keep them away from certain areas. I don't think they typically are gonna go like after your garden. They're actually gonna, like we said earlier, they're gonna pollinate your garden, which is a good thing. So on to hares and rabbits. So they're truly unlike the bats and the shrews. They're actually 
uh, a nuisance. They can actually wreak havoc in your garden and overnight they could destroy everything that you planted, all of your baby plants and even your mature plants. They can actually get your native species of plants and mow them down to a stem also. And they also like to girdle trees, which is where they chew around the bark just enough to kill the tree, no matter how big the tree is. It can be a full 30 year old mature tree and a rabbit can take it out. We speak from experience. Yes. <laughs> We had pet rabbits that were, we used them for the for the manure, and uh, they did quite a bit of damage in our backyard to some of our fruit trees. So yeah, so rabbits, of course, they dig and they burrow under things, like Doug said. You can control them with deterrents, like it's called goat weed. I guess they also don't like honeysuckle, and then impatience which are a type of a flower, I guess that can be a deterrent. So you could like plant, plant that around your perimeter to kind of keep them from coming into where you don't want them to go. You can also handle rabbits with things like chicken wire. They, they can't get through chicken wire. They, they could get over it if it's not tall enough. They could also get under it. So if you're gonna fence out chickens, if you're gonna fence out rabbits at all, you wanna dig that fence down. So you're just gonna always assume that they're gonna dig under whatever you put up. So just go ahead and dig down. I don't know how far, probably a foot, I would guess, would be a good amount to dig down to make sure that those rabbits can't get underneath that fence. Next, we're gonna talk about rodents, which it seems, it appears that there are more varieties of rodents than there are other creatures in Arizona, uh, namely the prairie dogs considered a rodent, the chickmunks, the squirrels, the gophers, chipmunks. mice, rats. There's actually 19 varieties of rats and I believe over 12 varieties of mice. Yeah. Um, but they can get in and actually destroy property. They can chew through wood, they can burrow through mud, through your sandbags, all that good stuff. Uh, they can wreak havoc and by the time you see the damage it's probably too late. They're notorious too for like chewing on wires so if you're living in an RV like we'll probably be doing you need to make sure and protect that wiring because they'll get in there and they'll chew it and I, I don't know I think they use it for their nesting material or something but that is that can be a big problem so you want to use some sort of protectant around those wires. Yeah it files down their teeth when they chew on stuff like that because the teeth will grow actually up until it ingrowns into the bottom and kills them if they don't continue to chew so nice yeah so you can deter them and actually one of their natural deterrents are snakes so as much as you might not like snakes and especially things like rattlesnakes you might consider leaving the snakes alone because they're going to naturally they're going to naturally go after those rodents and kind of keep them cold for you so that's one benefit of snakes that i can think of yeah so and we're not going to mention really we're not going to go into depths about snakes birds or insects in this video because that's going to be an entirely different video altogether yeah because we didn't actually realize how many animals were in southeast arizona cochise county <laughs> we're kind of surprised well, let's go back to the rabbits a little bit and this also goes for the rodents if you keep your area around your property mowed fairly small these animals don't like to be out in the open so uh, there's bird of prey and snakes and all this good stuff and they're not going to dodge 100 yards to your property if they can stay in the hidden grass and and stay protected that way. So that is one way of deterring rabbits and mice and rodents is just keeping your property hygienically clean and mowed as short as possible. Hygienically cleaned? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I To me that basically means like, don't leave your, your um, livestock feed like open. Like don't leave a bag of it just like sitting open. Even if it's in something enclosed like a barn or a shed, that's something you should put it like in a metal container with a metal lid because many of those rodents will chew right through plastic. So that's a consideration. Just keep the area clean and don't give them, don't give them food. Like basically, don't feed them because if you if you do, they'll come. So you just want to keep your stuff, you know, keep your keep your property clean. That really makes a big difference. Keep trash covered. 
and this goes for any animals like this isn't just rodents and rabbits this is anything bears anything else you just want to keep that trash contained and you don't want to give those animals a reason to want to come to your property and also they sell a hardware cloth and it's quarter inch or maybe even an eighth inch thick. Oh. and if you know where they're coming and going from you can actually seal off areas like that and set up traps of course to get rid of your little new scent rats and mice. And this is our this is our dog Willow. <laughs> she likes to get in on the movie sometimes. So the next thing we're going to talk about are coyotes, which um, they can actually be a benefit and a nuisance. So they can be. <laughs> she's trying to climb on the table. She's a coyote. She is. She. We call her our little coyote because she's about the size of a coyote. So they can be a benefit because they will actually cull the the wild animals in the area that are sickly. They'll naturally go after them, and that can be it, and it can keep the population of things down that might be a nuisance to you. They don't usually have anything to do with people. They're usually avoid people, but they will go after like if you keep barn cats and things like that. Chickens. Chicken of course they're going to go after the chickens they mostly hunt in the dusk and at, and at night so you know you always want to keep your livestock in safe containment the chicken you know wild animals will find a way to get to your livestock if they can so chickens especially are vulnerable because they don't really have a way to protect themselves except if they have a rooster with them but a guard dog can also um, they call them lar uh, livestock guard dogs LGDs and those can be great to have for many reasons but they will help keep the coyotes away too so and we're going to be doing a video an extensive video on the top 10 guard dogs for your homestead next coming up yeah but uh yeah it's a uh, the coyotes will actually eat your rabbits so those nuisance things like that and so and what if they're if you're just seeing a couple here and there once in a while they're probably helping you more than harming you mm -hmm. uh, they don't go in and they don't tear down your door and do all sorts of stuff like that but the thing about uh, if you're considering a fencing option uh, we believe a guard dog would probably be the best option but a fencing option you're gonna have to go at least five feet high and even then there there's been spottings where coyotes will literally climb up hog panels and cattle panels and even uh, standard chain link fence and climb over the top and go get whatever they need to get uh, it's it's uh, pretty common here in Colorado for them to jump over a six foot wooden fence and go eat the family dog you know yeah. it's uh so you're talking there's implementation you can uh they put rollers on the top of the fences and that so when they do get to the top they just can't get a grip or anything like this but mm -hmm. so if you're considering a fence for keeping coyotes out you're probably going to have to put some money into it and go tall little engineering involved in there well and i think electric fence can be really can be really good for coyotes too if you do yeah. it right so yeah so coyotes you know you don't need to be afraid of them but yeah they'll go after your livestock but they can also be beneficial too like we talked about so next thing we want to talk about is the gray wolf i don't believe they're in the area of arizona where we bought our property i think they're a little bit further to the north but those of you that have property or live up in the northeast part of Arizona, I do believe the gray wolves are pretty, um, I think that's the Mexican gray wolf that's up there. They re-released re them into the wild several years ago, so that they can be interesting to deal with. And they typically go after larger livestock. I'm sure they go after, they're opportunists, so I'm sure that they can go after rabbits and stuff like that too, but they're, they're probably going after your goats and your sheep and your chickens and maybe even a cow if there's enough of them together. But before you go thinking that you can go shooting at them, just check with your laws because I'm sure they're yeah. endangered. I'm sure that they have a protection yeah. uh, about them. If you have a serious problem with the gray wolf, contact your fish and wildlife mm -hmm. uh, and they will probably send somebody down or they'll give you some suggestions yeah they can jump really high I, I was reading they can jump like 12 feet so wow. that's a pretty tall fence that you're gonna have to put up or maybe an electric fence would do the trick too I think they they kind of avoid being around people so that's a good thing and having a livestock guard dog would that help at all in that situation I'm not sure you better have some pretty big dogs yeah and maybe a, a few of them <laughs> yeah for sure right Fox 
Um, they're not a huge risk, but they will go after your chickens. They're actually known to, to go after chickens and kill chickens. They're pretty sneaky. So, But they do, I believe, they're more nocturnal than... They're not going to be hunting your chickens most likely during the day unless there's something wrong with them. But again, we go back to having your chickens and your livestock in a very in a secure pen at night is going to be critical for their survival and, and their safety. And keep it clean. And again, mm -hmm. the fox is another one of those beneficial animals. If you see one around, it might signal that you have a bigger problem than you figure you do. You might yeah. have some rats or rodents or uh, something on your property that's drawing them there because normally they like to hunt out in the wild and uh, if they're opportunists if they see that it's easier to get the rats and the mice coming out of your barn then they're gonna go after those instead so so next on the list is bear and you know there is bear in Arizona I hope I never see a bear anywhere near our property but bear typically they want to avoid people unless you make it um, a area where they can easily eat from. So some of the things that you need to do around your property if you've got bear in your area are keep your trash contained and it needs to be contained in a bear proof container because bears can open certain types of containers. So make sure it's bear proof, you know, that's just super yeah. important. And I heard bears have like a hundred times the scent of yep. a dog. Yep. So oh, if you geez. leave anything uh, crazy. around your property, they're going to come. I mean, we just had some residents up here on the foothills that had their chicken coop entirely destroyed by oh, a bear yeah. and they ate all the... Well, yeah. They didn't necessarily eat the chickens, they just killed them all. Yeah. For some, they were, maybe the chickens put the middle finger up to them or something, <laughs> I don't know, but pissed the bear off and... Tore the door right off the coop. So, yep. you, I mean, if you've got hungry bears, well, you know, they'll... They'll get into stuff, so think about that. I don't think there's bears in the area that we're going to be because there's not a whole lot of mountains and trees, but but yeah, so keep that trash contained in a bear-proof container. Also, if you have a compost pile, uh, you want to make sure that that's also in a container that a bear can't get to because that's, a, I mean, that's easy food for them, right? They just go over and they have a little snack, so you want to keep that contained and you want to keep it away from where you're keeping your livestock you don't want to have it be like a magnet for the bear to come right to where your livestock are yeah and no fence is stopping a bear so mm -hmm. we, we won't even talk about a fence for this instance yeah yeah a fence um, is not next stop we're going to talk about raccoons weasels uh, ferrets and badgers. Uh, badgers, I believe, are part of the wolverine family, and they are actually very ferocious. They're, you don't want to see one. They're little, but they're very... Uh, they go berserker. If they see something they want to eat, they don't care if you're standing next to your dog. They'll go after the dog. Uh, the raccoons, they're, again, if you are not keeping your homestead clean expect to see raccoons and yeah. they'll even put a house they'll even make their house close to the source of food they'll put a mm -hmm. they'll go and have their babies up in the attic of your house even just so they can climb down into your garbage can every night and get to them and they're mean you don't want to get near raccoons they can be really vicious so and with any of the animals that we've talked about so far if you see where they're like nesting or housing where they're building a house basically where they're building a little mouse house or they're building a you know wherever they're going to either have babies or where they're going to live you want to clear that out as quickly as you can obviously not with them in it but don't make it don't make it comfortable for them right you just want to get that stuff and and get rid of it yeah and use an electrical fence we suggest uh yeah. well, they can climb over anything they're little monkeys so yeah and raccoons can actually open even locking things they've got i, I think is they've got a thumb don't they don't yeah, raccoon? they have opposing thumbs so they can they can do more complicated things um a lot of these animals are smart and and you know again they're hungry enough they're going to work on it and figure it out so remember that when you're when you're protecting your other animals next we're going to talk about the big cats and there's a few of them to talk about in Arizona. Yeah, there's uh there's jaguar mountain lion ocelot if i'm saying that right jagarundi 
or Jaguar Rundi. I'm not sure if I'm it's saying that right. Probably like either. a hybrid of a house cat and a Jaguar, maybe. I'm yeah, not sure. and, yeah. And Bobcats. So those are another thing that I don't particularly want to see around our homestead, but I do believe they are in the area that we bought our property. So they're attracted to meat, they're meat eaters. So, you know, that means they're attracted to your to your uh, livestock. So chickens and things like that, especially, I'm guessing they would go after smaller sized pigs and maybe baby goats and baby cat, cows and things like Most that. Most of them hunt at night. They're mostly nocturnal, except the jag Jaguarundi actually hunts during the day. So, mm. but they're very rare in Arizona. They do have them in Arizona, but they're very rare, so. Yeah, so your deterrent would be guard dogs again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you're beginning to see the, yeah. you see a pattern. Uh, keep your homestead clean. If you have a fence, most of these animals can climb up and over it. So we, we suggest electrical fencing and make the spacing of the electrical wires get smaller and smaller the lower they get so your smaller animals can't weasel through mm -hmm. in between the, the fencing wire layers. Mm -hmm. And other than that, guard dogs. I mean, you got your guard dogs, they'll at least alert you that one's on the property, right? And then you can just keep a lookout. Maybe it's just passing through, you know? And yeah. if it is going after your animals, then again, uh, I'm not sure if mountain lions are endangered or anything like this, if you're allowed to shoot them or, or if you want to call your fish and wildlife game or local police and see if they can help you out there. Deer pronghorns, which I've never even heard of, antelope and mountain sheep so all of them are really going to go after your gar your uh your garden and not necessarily your livestock so yeah, but they can destroy your garden mm -hmm. i'm sure uh one sit down and there goes all the food that you planted for yourself to yep. support yourself for the year uh but deer and them they typically they can spring over most fences so the deer fences that i've seen people put up especially like in missouri and stuff like that they put up these seven to eight foot tall cattle pan panels or hog panels whatever you want to call them to keep the deer out so uh, i'm not sure if they electrify those or anything because i don't think the deer has actually touched the fence i think they just clear it completely they just spring over the thing and never touch it so an electrical fence might not even be beneficial for you in this case just a very tall fence uh, livestock guard dog can be really helpful for for deer they get both skittish and all those animals do that we just mentioned so a livestock guard dog might be a great thing to enhance the fence if you're gonna if you're gonna do some kind yeah. of electric fence or something and the fact that the dogs if you're letting them loose they're not on the leash they're probably doing perimeter mm -hmm. walks once in a while and urinating and that scent also is a deterrent for mm -hmm. most of these animals that we've already spoken about we've been calling them javelina which they're little wild pigs they're not huge but they they can get up to like 80 80 pounds or so so they can get pretty big like the size of a big house dog but I guess the official name for them is collared peccary. So, but I think most people refer to them as javelina and they can be a nuisance um, along with porcupines. There's also feral dogs and feral cats. Yeah, and the, the javelinas, they can dig under your fence. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna go that route, you might want to reinforce what's under the ground or actually have your fence extend under the ground at least a couple feet so mm -hmm. that when they're burrowing and digging they'll be stopped right there mm -hmm. uh, other than that they can pretty much probably bend a regular chicken fence they can probably go right through it uh, yeah yeah so you're gonna have to build sturdy like hog panels and uh, electric fencing might keep those little guys out I think and they can get through hog panels for some reason or I'm, oh maybe not hog panels I was thinking they are cattle pigs, panels so. so the other the other big thing down there and just in Arizona and it's the same here in Colorado um, are the free roaming cattle so Arizona is a it's called a open range state or it's an or it's called open range law typically so what what that law means is that it's the homeowner's responsibility to keep the free range cattle out of their off their property. It is not the ranchers or or farm owners responsibility to keep them off your property. So it's your job to keep them out and they can be 
they can be tough to keep out. They're big animals, and they get they get these uh, routes that they that they travel through and travel on, and they once they've got that route in place and that's a big herd of them it's not easy to kind of change their route so they tend to kind of plow over things but and what was that not rutting but what do they do that oh, rubbing that's uh they do this rubbing we'll look up the name and we'll we'll pop the name up here i can't remember the name of it yeah but, but they just once they get rubbing up against something it pretty much they push it over so yeah. if it's a, a four by four fence post and they're rubbing up against it you're going to be having to come back a week later and fix that thing but and they'll rub up against structures too they'll rub it up against your car they'll rub up against your RV, <laughs> they'll, I mean, they can do a lot of damage. You know, it's a lot of weight on those animals. So the way to keep those out um, that we found is really, it's going to be electric fence. Barbed wire can be effective as, if it's installed properly. And then uh, using a high, it's called a high tensile wire with combined with electricity is a good way to keep them out. So that's, I think after all the research we've done, we've pretty much landed on a, probably a nine wire electric fence and a livestock guard dog. Yeah, maybe a couple. Maybe a couple, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so it was interesting researching this because again, we had no idea that there was as many animals as yeah, there there's are. There's quite an assortment of animals here, so. Yeah, for sure. So hopefully you learned something and got something out of that. And again, if you want to follow along on our channel, we'd love it if you subscribe and we'll see you soon. All right. We'll see you.